Let's look at simulation partitioning next. These are different methods how you can filter out collisions and interactions from your simulated world. The first one is collision groups. Let's load that scene and look what is happening. So here you have four different kinds of things, boxes, spheres, cones, and capsules. They're all grouped together here, but they're all just individual rigid bodies, and they're not set up differently than how we have set things up previously. But there's going to be one interesting aspect to their behavior, and that is that they do not interact with each other, meaning that uh, they do interact um, within their kind, but not between different kinds. You can see this capsule will, however, will go through this box, but it will not go through the other capsule. The same thing with the cones. The cones will go through a box, they will go through a sphere, they will go through a capsule, but they will push on other cones. How do we do that? So one option is to use collision groups. And you can see we have four collision groups set up here. You can create collision groups from the physics create menu. So physics create collision group. I just made a new one. And by default, it's empty like this. So it has effectively, um, let's look here first, a number of paths uh, that have um, things that the group should include. And then it has a number of groups with which this group should not interact with. The expansion rule and the includes root are probably more advanced things that in general I have found that we don't really need to touch or care about. So let's see how these ones are set up right now. So the cones group, it includes everything under world cone actors. So that basically means everything under this path and its children. That basically means all of the cones. And we are saying that all of these cones should not collide, so filter collisions with boxes, capsules, and spheres. Those are basically these three other groups. And of course, for the membership of these groups, we need to select a group and then look what that group includes. So for example, the capsules would include everything under capsule actors. And it's now set up so that each of these groups will filter collisions with all of the other groups. Now, that basically means that there is two rules set up always. So for example, when you're thinking about boxes versus cones, then the cones say, I don't want to collide with boxes. And the boxes say, I don't want to collide with cones. This is not necessary to set from both directions we could actually remove this one here. So let's say that the boxes will no longer ask to not collide with cones, but they will still ask. Um, so the cones will stay say they don't want to collide with boxes. Let's see what that does. And uh, you can see that this is sufficient. So the, the boxes are going through the cones still. So now if I would remove the rule also from the other group, so the cones group does not filter with boxes anymore. Now we simulate and the stock, the, the box stack collapse. Now suddenly you can see that these collisions are not filtered anymore and the cone and the box interacts. So that's basically it for how to use collision groups. This is always the best method if within a larger simulation world you have really well-defined groups of things and some pairs of those interact and some pairs of group, those groups do not interact.